our discussion now. We're going to talk a little bit about truth tables. So let me go over some basic truth tables with you. Let's say I have this truth table here. I have A and B. Now, in this expression, A and B are assumed to be Boolean variables. They're Boolean variables. Now, <clears throat> let's say we're going to draw a truth table. I want to know how many columns and how many rows the truth table is going to have. In order to understand how many columns the truth table is have, we have to ask ourselves, how many inputs are there for this expression? Mr. Dillon, sir, in this expression, how many inputs do you see? Two. And how many outputs, sir? One. So we have two inputs and one output. So I'm going to say this is going to be, I'm going to draw the uh, columns here like this. I'm going to put A here. I'm going to put B here. And I could put output here or X or Y, or I could simply put here A and B like this since it's not so bad. It's small enough that I could do that. And now the next thing I need to know is how many rows is this expression going to yield? And what I'm trying to ask here is, how many different ways can I arrange the variables A and B with trues and falses? How many different ways can there be? Uh, Mr. Degoj, what do you think, sir? Four. Four different ways. Now, normally we would put trues and falses here, but historically people write truth tables, they use zeros and ones. And they use zero to mean false. And they use a, 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 one to mean true. So I'm going to write them. Now, it's important that you write them in a specific order because the reader is expecting this order. And you want to write them as if you're counting in binary, counting in binary. So you're going to write them in this order specifically. Oops, I me and I messed it up. Let me try again here. Okay, here is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, like that. So you can see I'm counting 0, 1, 2, 3, like that in binary. And now what I want to do is write, what are the outputs going to be? Now, for this one, it's so trivial that we don't really need to go through this analysis, but I'm just showing you how a truth table works. So for this one, to figure it out, I would put a, a false here and a false here, and I want to know what would the output here be. Miss uh, Johannes, what do you think over here? RM, what do you think over here? Huh? Zero here, false. And what do you think about this one? And this one? So here, A is 1, and uh, B is 0. So I have true and false. What do you think? False. And what about this one here? OK, so that one would be true. So you can see that this is the truth table for a simple AND expression. Now let's take another one. Let's take this one here. And this is an even simpler truth table. My question is, how many rows and how many columns should there be? Mr. Pandali, how many columns should the truth table have, sir? Two. Two. What are they? OK, and the next question I have is, how many rows will the truth table have, rows of data? Let's see here. Oh, OK, sir. What are they? Tell me. OK, like that. And uh, you can just finish it up, Mr. Pandali. What would be the outputs here? OK, so you can see that that would be the not gate or the inverter, like that. All right, let's just do one more. Let's do this one. Yes? I think you're bleeding from your mouth, miss. <laughs> okay, let's do this last one. Like that. And this one is also going to have three columns. And now I would like to know, what would the outputs here be? Just talk to your friend for just a minute and describe what the outputs here would be. So now we're researching, um, other than stuff like Visual Basic, every C-based 
language always has short circuiting. So oh, you can so essentially just tell them that like you know, okay. anything they'll ever use in their career will always have. Uh, so Visual Basic does not have short circuiting? No. There's got to be some other languages like APL and stuff like that that may or may not have it, no? So definitely like C, C sharp, C++. Yeah, but those all come from the same boat uh, base. What about the languages that don't come from the Just, Just literally type in uh, Google uh, sh uh, programming languages without short circuiting or something like that. Oh. Okay. Okay, um, Miss uh, Cindy, can you tell me what these would, outputs would be here? Okay, so that's a simple OR gate. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, this is a waste of time. But it turns out that truth tables can be useful for somewhat more complicated expressions. And I'm going to go through that example with you today. We're going to, I'm going to ask everyone to take out a piece of paper now. And I'm going to give you two expressions. And you'll see that just by looking at it, it won't be so obvious initially whether the two expressions are equivalent or not. And so what we're going to do is we're going to develop a truth table for the first one, and then a truth table for the second one, and then we're going to compare the truth tables. And I'm going to make a claim that two expressions, two Boolean expressions, are only equivalent if their truth tables are equivalent. That means they have to have the same number of rows, columns, and the inputs and outputs all have to be the same. And if that, only that condition is met, then the two expressions are going to be identical. So let's look at these two expressions. Here's the first one. And here's the other expression. And initially, it may not be so obvious if these are the same or not. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do the truth table for this one, and then the truth table for this one. And then I'd like you to compare the two. So I'll get you going by setting you up here. So this one is going to have three columns here. OK, Ms. Missone, can you help me with this one here? Uh, what are the outputs here for this configuration? It's 0, 0, 0, and 1. And what did you get for this one, Miss? Um, I was still working on it, but I think it's the same. It's OK, it is the same. And if you're not sure how to work through this, because it is a little complicated, for each one, what you want to do is take these inputs, like for this example right here, 0, 0. You want to put a 0 here and a 0 there. Then the next thing you do is you're going to say the not A or not 0. So this part here is going to be a 1. That's going to be a 1. And then here you're going to say 1 or 1. That's going to be a 1. And then finally you have a not there. That's going to turn it back into a 0. And you want to work through that exercise that I've shown here in red for each of these sets of inputs. Yes, Jeremy? Is like canceling out the knots like a thing you can do? You can cancel out the knots when they're right next to each other like this. See when they're like this? Yeah. Or also, if you have like four of them, or if you have an even number, you can cancel them. If you have like three of them, like this, you can cancel two of them out and just leave one. We're going to talk about this after, after lunch, which is part of our analysis for De Morgan's Law, but that's the idea. Though, you can't like, cancel you these know, two. Could you, like, you, you, you could just, well, that's, that's basically what we're going to talk about after lunch today. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? OK, we're going to do one more before lunch, and then we'll declare victory on this, uh, on this truth table thing. OK, here we go. So we're going to do this one now. We're going to do one. The first one's going to be A or B. Right? And the other one is going to be not, not A and not B. You're done, miss? OK, let's go through this first set over here. What is the truth table results for the simple OR operation here? And just before you leave for lunch, what's this one here? Okay, they are the same also. We're going to talk after lunch about why they're the same.